So Nathan McKinnon has been lighting up the hockey world. Big chip to the front. McKinnon scores! Here's a chance shot, he scores! So Stahl had to go off. James replaced him, McKinnon with a dark move. Score! And Stahl went to the bench, nobody replaced him. Look at McKinnon spinning on the wall. Watch the back door. Right off the skate. Like it to the slot. Score! Puck into the circle, shot. Score! Tries to get it thrown, McKinnon, score! Sent down deep, McKinnon turns it back and scores! Taze fresh off the bench, McKinnon one-timer, score! There's McKinnon one-timer, he scores! Nathan McKinnon! In this video, I'm going to show you a couple standards that he has set that you can also access yourself so that you can begin to play more just like him. Also, don't tell anyone else this, he said that I have figured it out and that it's easy. It's entitled yeah. How to Gallop Like Nathan McKinnon. What cadence does is build upon those pillars. So this means I can have a slow cadence or I can have a fast cadence. So what do you think? Does his description or his explanation make sense to you? Yeah, I can see it. Uh, can you feel the cadence when you're skating? Yeah, no. Just, <laughs> yeah, he's got it down. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some of those standards that he's setting? Over the past three years, he has ended up in the top three among skaters who have, who have 20 mile an hour or more speed bursts. It was something over 500 or so. Only Connor McDavid and Braden Point matched up with what he got, which basically means he's skating over 20 miles an hour in over 10 of his shifts per game, if you span that out over an 82 game season. And as you can see, based off of this year, he is number one in that category. Now it's not required to be the absolute fastest player. And as you can see by Nathan McKinnon, he is not getting those numbers. Like he is not hitting 25 miles an hour on any of his speed bursts and he doesn't need to, but he is hitting over 20 miles an hour the most out of anybody. That is an in-game metric and standard that we can use to better match up with how he plays. Another standard that he gets is that every single shot that he takes hits 80 miles an hour or more, whether it's a quick release shot or a or one where he has time to load it up, if you want to call it that, or a one-timer, or literally every single shot that he takes will hit that 80 mile an hour or more standard. That's a second standard that he hits. And then a third standard that he hits, every part of his movement is at a high cadence. Whether he's in tight to different players, changing directions, and just improving his overall deception, and puck control and readiness, his higher cadence allows him to be more deceptive. Now we're gonna go over some drills that can help you to better match up to those standards. Now a staple movement that he does for his skating is that he will actually gallop in between his cross unders. And here's how you can make that work. It's not that you spend extra time on this inside edge and then hop. It's that you actually have to spend more time on the outside edge and then pop. If you follow the biomechanics of skating, which Train 2.0 has pioneered, you already know that if you bias your crossovers to the outside edge instead of the inside edge, you actually get a mechanical advantage. You get faster with less effort. So really a simple starting drill is that you start out here, bias outside edge, cross, bias outside edge, cross, bias outside edge, cross. And you want to intentionally start out slow so that when you pick up the cadence, you are better able to get the movement. Now, a key point on this is that I'm not necessarily trying to hop upwards with it. Rather, it's just a product of me going forward and biasing the outside edge. As soon as you have all the form points of the cross under mechanics ready, so that means you have your Y angle, that means you have your shin angle, weight to your heels, hand inside of the Crosby crevice so that you center your mass and everything else. Then you can start to pick up the rhythm, which will actually make you faster. And that will be your first drill. Now there's tons of variations with this linear crossover drill. You can go two crosses to the middle. You can go three. You can do different footwork in between. But as you progress this to the standard, which is, you keep all of your form points at 150 beats per minute, which looks like this. That's how you know that you're starting to look like Nathan McKinnon with his crossovers. 
let's move on to the next drill. So Nate is a master of shooting very hard off of a lot of different shots, whether they're quick releases or they're one timers or any other variant like that. I'm going to link to my shooting standards video because you will see in better detail exactly what mechanics he's using and what talk about with different styles of shots. One of the ones that he's really good at is getting into a corkscrew after transitioning from any mechanic that he takes. So that's a second standard is that you want to be shooting 80 miles an hour or more on any of your shots that you take. Now let's move on to the third standard. So McKinnon is very good at keeping a high cadence in every single movement that he does. If we were to break down a few clips, we would be able to tell that if you just looked at his footwork and the rate at which he steps, in order to track that, we would need to uncover something like beats per minute or maybe some other metrics as, as well. You don't have to be as precise with something like beats per minute, but the point of it is now you're uncovering how to match fast footwork, which actually creates deception. One of the better drills to do the matchup to what McKinnon does is a stutter to an anchor. So basically you take a few stutters in a wide stance and then you anchor by lifting the toe and digging the heel into the ice. And this is very McKinnon-like because he gets into a wide stance all the time and he really uses the anchor more so than anything else. And that will be your next standard to go after is if you want to match McKinnon, you do this drill at 180 beats per minute or more. Now we're going to hop into the gym and showcase some ability standards that you're going to need in order to match up to someone like Nate McKinnon. I'm going to surprise some of you by saying that in order to get more of Nate McKinnon's abilities, you actually should not do his workouts. And what I mean by that is his workouts are customized to him and him alone. There's some pretty popular clips about his workouts and how they run up hills and things like that. And you could copy those yourself, but is it the hill running that's going to make you go faster? Or is it training specific areas in your body that is going to make you faster or more bulletproof or, you know, just more able, more flexible? Personally, when I stopped copying other people's workouts and just focused on my own abilities and my own hip strength, my own knee strength, ankle strength, back strength, much like you have with this seat of good morning here, that is where I started to make more progress. And it's the same case for every single one of you because I guarantee you, you're not Nate McKinnon. And if I was coaching him, I would make him do this as well. I don't know if he's already strong in this movement, but that doesn't matter because low back strength is directly correlated with skating speed based off of in-house studies by Charles Poliquin and continued research in-house by HG Athletic Truth Group. So the seated good morning, one of the two essentials for hockey skating. The other essential is going to be the HG split squat. If you wanted to get into the look of both movements, they'll mimic the front and the back of a skating stride. But that's not the point. The point of doing these exercises is that they help to strengthen your knees, your hip flexors, your hips in general, your groin especially, this vastus medialis muscle, a little bit of the ankle as well, and also the low back. So, but if you did want to get into the specifics of how these exercises looked, well, they actually do copy a skating stride. I don't worry about that specifically because that comes secondary. When you focus on the abilities of your body, the secondary movements that you do come easier or unnecessary. In this case, the secondary movements are, you know, skating strides and things like that. You want to get your split squat and your seated good morning to at the very least 75% of your body weight for five reps on the split squat. And then it's going to be 10 reps on the seated good morning with the intention to eventually work up to 100% of your body weight on both exercises, split squat being five reps on each side and the seated good morning 10 reps. Now to remind you, just because Nathan McKinnon maybe does or maybe doesn't do this exercise does not mean that you should not do this exercise in order to be more like him. These two exercises have been proven to correlate with skating speed. And it also, mostly because, and this is your biggest takeaway, regardless if you believe the data or not, to get your joints feeling better, to get your joints stronger in a longer range, you extend the length of your stride, literally by stretching out your connective tissues and 
strengthening them in that stretch position. That appears to be the secret to athleticism. At the end of the day, it's a fine line to know what exactly to copy with what these best players are doing. I've found the most success in matching their movements when they're skating and when they're shooting, when they're stick handling, the three essential on ice movements. When they're doing those things, you can copy their, their movements as they are. You wouldn't want to copy the drills. So just because McKinnon does a specific drill does not mean that you should copy it yourself because it's a drill that he also does. Because it is very likely you're going to move differently than he is if you just focus on the drill. If you focus on the movement, going a layer deeper with the details, focusing on literally how a human body moves, that is where you're going to make more progress. In a gym setting, in a workout setting, you are not going to copy his workouts to reach his standards. You are instead going to increase your personal ability with what you are weakest at. But at the same time, working up to athletic standards like 100% of body weight on the seat of good morning and the HG split squat, like double body weight on a back squat, like 20% of your body weight on a tibialis raise, like incline press at I think it's like 1.75 times your body weight for 10 reps or so. Regardless if McKinnon himself can or cannot do those specific exercises, there is nothing in history ever that suggests that more ability is a bad thing. In fact, the evidence suggests that the more ability you get, the more skills that you learn, you increase your odds of success. So let's say like your shoulder's hurting and you can't reach the McKinnon standards, you're not gonna skate as fast as him, plain and simple. To get your shoulder stronger, get your upper body stronger, you would have to first reach the standards on an external rotator and then reach the standards on an incline press. If your knee is weak, oh, if the legs feed the wolf, there's no way in hell you're gonna match the McKinnon standards. You gotta strengthen the hell out of your knee. How do you do that the best? HEG split squat, reverse step up, sled, full bend, HEG squat. How you reach his standards is personal to you. In my journey, I had to get my hip flexors super strong. I had to get my seat of good morning super strong because my hips were hurting that bad. So now my reverse squat is at 75% of my body weight for 20 reps. I tried out 100%, like the full cable. I can only do that for 10 reps that, that are good quality. My upper body health has always been there. You need your upper body to oppose your lower body. So as I've gotten my upper body stronger, I've actually gotten faster, even though it's like, well, wait, wait a second, the legs feed the wolf. Yeah. If you have something that's designed with an X across your body, like what an inner spring is, you're going to have something that opposes each other. Like literally, if my upper body didn't matter for what my lower body was moving, I should not be moving side to side with, especially like my head and my shoulders and just everything else. Biomechanics should not work if the upper body did not matter. So if you get your upper body stronger, you're gonna get faster. Maybe that's a standard that you have to pursue. The beauty of this standard system is that everyone has their individual route, but clearly someone has set them sky freaking high that everyone can eventually get to. So again, for me, I just passed 100% of body weight on my secret morning. I've done 100% of body weight on the split squat. I'm at 350 pounds on a full bend HG squat, which needs to get up to 400 so that I can be 2x body weight. So I'm only 1.75 or so. Uh, incline press just crossed 200 pounds for two reps. I hit 225 for one on a flat press. Rotators have always been strong. Shoulders have always been strong, but that's been the case for a few years at this point. Anyway, that's the McKinnon standards. That's how you get to them yourself. And that's how we can bring up the entire culture of hockey training and change it for the better. We don't look to the textbooks of the past and we don't look to the fat ass coaches that say that they know the game, but then actually don't because they're fat and they ignore how a human body moves. And we actually adopt it for ourselves. Understand how these guys are moving so that you can do it yourself, so that you can access their same abilities. We're just studying ability, that's it. And I hope you're along for the ride. If you want to join Hockey Ability Movement, sign up for the Hockey Act system. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.